So we're going to look specifically at one example, and that is the Swiss franc and the problems experienced in 2014-2015 that caused issues for a lot of Swiss businesses. In fact, any country dealing with Switzerland at that time would have had an issue. And the problem all started back in 2011. And the Swiss government and the Swiss central bank, they decided that, look, we've got all of these countries around us that all use the euro. And we're using a different currency. We're using the Swiss franc. And the problem is, is that these are our trading neighbours. We can just drive straight over the border and suddenly everyone's using the euro. And our businesses, the Swiss businesses, need consistency. And they decided, right, let's keep the euro and the Swiss franc pegged together. They decided that basically they were prepared to buy foreign currency, that being the euro, in unlimited quantities just to keep that level the same. Exchange rates vary based on the buying and selling of currencies in the markets. If someone is buying lots of euro, then the value of the euro will get stronger. If everyone's buying lots of Swiss francs, the value of the Swiss franc will get stronger. And actually they said, no, 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 we're going to, whatever's happening in the market, we're just going to balance it all out. And the Swiss central bank are going to buy and sell the currency to keep it pegged at that level so that there's consistency in the business. However, the euro in this, this time, going from the, the financial crash in 2008, 2009, the whole of the, the euro and the Europe, European economies were struggling. And so it was actually quite a bad time. By 2014, the euro was really devaluing quite strongly. And the Swiss bank were having to pump huge amounts of money into buying euros and selling francs in order to keep the franc pegged at that level. On the 15th of January, Frankageddon happened. Basically, the euro was struggling so much that there's no way that the Swiss bank could keep up anymore. On that date, they decided just immediately, right, now we're going to stop pegging the euro against the Swiss franc just today. This came as a huge shock for any business. Lots of business in Switzerland that were exporters operating around the world. Huge shock for them. Anyone that was um, selling to Switzerland, actually from their point of view, it was quite a good thing actually because it would have made all their products cheaper in that, uh, in that country. But it was a huge shock to the system. The reason being is that there was a 23% change against the euro in one day. 23% in one day. What that meant then was that exporters, suddenly the prices of their products rose 23% in their overseas markets. Either that or they would have to sell at a lower amount and therefore take the hit in a much lower, um, much lower profits. The Nick Hayek, the chief executive of Swatch, said, World's fail me! Today's SNB action is a tsunami for the export industry and for tourism, and finally for the entire country. Of course, Swatch, um, as, which is a, 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 a watchmaker, of course, the Swiss very famous for making watches and selling those watches all around the world, expensive luxury watches. Suddenly, all their products were going to be 23% more expensive, or simply they'd make 23% less profit if they sold at the same prices. Um, which was going to make an enormous difference to their business, their profit margins. So you can see why he was so upset. Companies that had specific contracts suddenly find that they'd, you know, they'd agreed an amount that they've yet to pay, suddenly found they were paying 23% more for the things that they'd agreed to purchase. There were even some companies, one company, Alpari, which was a spread betting firm in the UK, um, that basically focused around Forex trading, they'd got positions in relation to the Swiss franc and suddenly those positions were all loss making and the company shut virtually immediately because they just lost so much on that one day. So it made a huge impact for the country but also for the companies that were operating within that industry and it shows how important currencies and currency issues can be. Now, of course, 
on a day-to-day -day basis, basis, currencies change far less than that. So it's not quite as big an impact, but as you look at things over weeks and months, they do change enough to make a significant difference in profits um, in relation to businesses. So what do we mean then by currency risk? Well, it is the potential change in the exchange rate of one currency against another and how that may impact business. Typically with currency risk, we're thinking about the negative impacts, things costing us more or things being valued less. Because obviously there's the other side, there's the positive side where you can earn um, more money or you can pay less. So for every, if we go back to the Swiss case, for every contract where someone made a loss, if we go back to this point here, for every contract where someone made a loss, someone else made a 23% gain. So there was someone that was very positive on the end of each of those contracts as well. Um, actually, those four X traders, for those that made the loss, there would have been people that were just lucky. No one knew overnight what was going to happen. That they, um, Or maybe they predicted it in advance. Maybe they were looking ahead thinking, look, the Swiss bank is no way they're going to keep up with this, given the weakness of the, uh, of the euro. Um, they just can't keep this going. So maybe there were some very uh, successful gamblers, as it were, in that case. So risk can be positive as well as negative, but typically in this subject, we're only really interested in the negative, okay? And how do we go about managing and reducing that risk? Two types of risk then. Transaction risk is to do with specific transactions. Translation risk is to do with assets on the balance sheet changing in value. And if you enjoyed that video and would like to see more from us, be sure to like and subscribe and consider following us on social media like Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, or go to our website linked in the description.